So let me start by sharing a personal story. Between the ages of 16, I had an online business. And I'm quite proud to say that it was generating a ra rather decent amount of money, given the fact that I was a student. But that's also the time where I made my first strategic mistake. I was only selling a single product. Now, as some of you might know, selling one product, when that product stops selling, the business stops as well. That's the first strategic mistake I made, and I made others afterwards, and that's probably why I started my career as a strategic consultant afterwards. But I remember that moment very well. I was 21, I was sitting in my student room, and I felt uncertain. Uncertain about the income that will come in the next coming months. How will I make my living? How will I make a living? And so when we have questions, we often ask our friends for answers. In my case, I don't like to bother my friends too much. Um, so I asked a search engine how to make money on the internet. Now, search, en search engines, they turn out to be really, really, really good friends. First, because at least they reply, but also they reply with a lot of pages. And that day they replied with Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is a revolutionary tool that allows us to rethink the way where money is created and also to rethink our financial system. But behind Bitcoin, there is a technology that allows to have a much more profound impact on society. And that technology is called the blockchain. Now, the blockchain is a complex thing, and I very quickly became amazed by the inner workings. I tried to understand how this thing was working. I wrote my master thesis on it, I wrote a book on it, and I even managed to make a career out of my passion. Now, what is really key to understand in the blockchain is how much of a paradigm shift it is. And the last big paradigm shift we knew was the age of the information, was the internet that came along. Now, I like to compare those two so that you understand how powerful the blockchain could be. The internet made it possible for anyone to spread any type of information to anyone else without the need for a news aggregator in the middle, in a very horizontal way. Well, that's exactly what blockchain makes possible as well. Blockchain makes it possible for anyone to create his own currency or blockchain token and start sending it over to anyone else without the need for a bank or a financial intermediary in the middle in a very horizontal way. Now, this allows for, for many applications in businesses. But I want you to make up your mind for yourself how the blockchain actually can transform our world. And actually, I want you to understand how the blockchain works. So what we're going to do today is actually having a very simple explanation of how the blockchain works. And therefore, I bore with me my magic boxes. Now, this is a block from the blockchain. It's block number one, and in this block, we can store all types of information. For example, data, transactions, or maybe contracts, whatever. Now, what's very key to understand in the blockchain is that the blockchain is managed by rules. And one of the rules of the blockchain is that every block is linked to the previous block. So when block number two comes along, he says, hello, I'm block number two, and I'm going to link myself to block number one. Now, a couple of minutes later, a third block comes along. And he says, hello, I'm block number three, and I'm going to link myself to block number two. By doing so, we create a sequential order of block, where each block is linked to the previous block, which creates a chain of blocks. Hence the word blockchain. It's just that simple. This is a blockchain. Now, remember how I say the internet and blockchains are very horizontal? That means that there is no such a thing as one single blockchain. But everyone who wants to be part of the blockchain community can create his own blockchain and can have his own blockchain on his computer. And so when someone wants to have access to the information on the blockchain, he just downloads a local copy. And as, as a result, everybody has within this community the same information. There is a consensus on the information that exists. So we have a chain of blocks. We have a chain of blocks that is distributed. Now, there's also a bit of a magic trick to the blockchain, is that you can't really remove information away. Now, to illustrate that example, I'm going to take a very... I'm going to assume that I, I write a book, and before publishing my book, I'm sending my book over to Maureen, who sits somewhere in the room here today. Maureen was a student with me, and I'm asking her for peer review. I'm asking her to give her, to give her feedback on my book before I publish it. Now, I'm waiting, and Maureen, Maureen receives the book, and she reads the book, and she thinks, ah, that's, that's actually a really good book. Who knows, maybe one day, a Nobel Prize. And what she does is, she's actually copy-pasting the book, because that's what we do in our digital age now. She changes my name by her name, and she publishes the book before I do. So what can we learn here? Well, 
First, Maureen, I thought you were a friend, but you're not really such a good friend. Uh, you sneaky woman, I know that, but still. Uh, but I, I was cautious. Before actually giving the book over to Maureen, I made a fingerprint of the book. And I stored that fingerprint in block number two. Now, because the fingerprint is stored in block number two, and not the book, because otherwise everybody can read the book for free, and that I don't want either. Um, but the book, there is a proof that I own the book at a certain point of time, which is, which is a point of time before I actually sending the book over to Maureen. So if Maureen wants to cheat, she actually has to remove the proof that I own the book. So she, have to, she has to remove the book, the, the book number two. And she doesn't have to remove it only on her blockchain, she also has to do it on the ten thousands of other blockchains that exist around the globe. And that's a very difficult task to do. So maybe she can remove the block on her blockchain, but everybody in the community will quickly realize that she's cheating. And by the way, block number three now makes a link to block number one. That's not a valid rule on the blockchain. So as if she wants to stay part of the community, she has no other choice than actually accepting the truth and accepting that there is a proof that I owned this book before. Now, I also mentioned how we could actually transfer uh, tokens or transfer payments on the blockchain. That's what we're going to see now. So, so far, we saw blockchain is a chain of block. It's distributed. A magic trick, you can never take information away. We're now going to see how we actually transfer value on the blockchain. So, therefore, I'm going to ask someone in the audience, maybe the young lady there, what's her name? Perina. Perina, okay. So, I'm going to send three tokens over to Perina, and I assume that these tokens, they actually exist. Uh, before they are created beforehand. And I'm writing a check from Jean-Luc to Perrine for an amount of three tokens. Now, this check goes into block number one, together with other transactions, and the block starts spreading on the network within the community. So everybody starts to see that I sent three bitcoins or three tokens over to Perrine. A couple of minutes later, another block comes along, and then a couple of a couple of minutes later, Perrine, you decide to send one of your tokens over to someone else in the room. Who do you choose? Antoine. Your boyfriend, Antoine. Of course, then it stays in the family. <laughs> so what are you going to do? You're going to do the same thing. You're going to write a check from Perrine to Antoine, and you're going to sign that with your digital signature. Now, this transaction goes with other transactions in block number three. And now, before other people start accepting block number three, they will ask themselves a few essential questions. Is this a valid block? This block number three, does it respect all of the rules? First, does it link to block number two? Yes, it does, so that's a valid rule. Is everything that's in the block also valid? Perrine, can she just send a transaction like that? Is that a valid transaction? Does she even own one token to send over? And what they will see is that in block number one, she received three tokens from me. She didn't spend them in the meantime, so she can certainly spend one token over. And everybody in the network will, or the computers from everybody in the network, will do the exact same checks. And they will realize that this is a valid block, all the transactions in there are valid, and we have a new state of the information. Perrine owns two uh, tokens. Now, by doing so, we create again consensus over the network, and we kind of collectively have an accounting system running. So you can imagine that this has some drastic changes for the accountants of tomorrow, and also the auditors of tomorrow who review the work of the accountants. And that's exactly what the people ask me to talk about most of the time. How will blockchain change my company? How will it reshape my industry? But that's not what I want you to talk about today. Today I want to share an application of the blockchain that very few people talk about. An application that I care about. An application that I think can actually make up for all the jobs that will be lost through the innovations of technology, actually make up for that, and that will allow a basic income. Now, what is a basic income? A basic income is an unconditional amount of money that we give to everyone within the community. That's given at a specific amount of time, and it's a specific amount, so the amount is fixed, as, is fixed as well. Now, what makes a basic income is also the fact that there is a redistribution mechanism that allows the money to be redistributed within that community. Now, I know what you might be thinking. How the hell can a society progress if everybody receives money to do absolutely nothing? Well, we've all been there. I've been there myself. Uh, and what I realized is that the answer doesn't lay so much into the question, what will we start doing as a society once we have a basic income? No, no, rather the answer lays into what will we stop doing as a society once we have a basic income? So what will we stop doing once we have a basic income? Well, 
to, in today's world, the way the society is architected and the way your government is architected, there are a lot of support programs. Think about it like the pension schemes, the unemployment benefits that we give every month to a couple uh, of people. And it's a very complex thing, different types of amounts and so on. All these programs and the jobs related to this program, they become obsolete when you have, once you have a basic income. So this is something that we will stop doing. Another thing is we know that poverty leads to criminality, which leads to more work for the police, police department, which leads to more work for the justice department. And I know in some countries there is a lot of work at the justice department. But once we have a basic income above the poverty line, we can assume that the criminality will diminish, which will result in less work for the police department, which will result in less work for the justice department as well. Now, all of these things are things that are bared by our society. We, we, the society pays for it, but who actually pays in the end? Well, that's you. The taxpayer pays for all of these things. Yet, at the same time, large corporations somehow manage, in a more or less legal way, to pay as least taxes as possible. And I think there as well, blockchain can make something possible that makes it impossible for these large corporations to avoid their duties to our society. So coming back to the question, why do we need a basic income? I think having a basic income will give people the certainty about the income they will have in the next coming months. We will also slim down the work that is being supported, carried by the governments to its bare essence. All the programs that are useless will no longer be there if they are replaced by a basic income. And finally, I believe more transparency through the blockchain will also make it more difficult for companies to avoid taxes, and we'll come back to that in just a minute. But first, let's have a look on how this will actually work. What you see arriving here, that's the basic income people within a community receive. Of course, there are people outside of these six people in the community as well. Now, before getting the money, the money needs to come from somewhere, so we need to find a way to find that money. And that's why we, I propose to create a wallet for redistribution. The wallet for redistribution is a wallet that sits on the blockchain that's going to collect a certain amount of tokens to be redistributed afterwards. And we know the amount of tokens that is necessary because we know the number of people that, to which we need to give a basic income. So there are many different ways to fill up this spot, and I'm not going to cover all of them, but one way to fill up this spot, for example, would be that at every transaction that happens, there's a percentage of that transaction that goes to this redistribution pot. Now, you, now, in this case, we had a transaction from someone who's rather poor to someone who's rather rich, and that might be because the person who's rich is rich because he's producing goods continuously, and there is just someone who bought something over from that person. Now, you might realize as well that the more people receive money, the richer they are, the more they're also contributing to this pot, because whenever you receive money, you're actually giving a part of your money directly to that wallet. And that's why I believe if we embed that in the system, in the rules of the blockchain, it's actually impossible to avoid taxes at this point of time, because as soon as you need to receive a payment, the blockchain also redistributes a part of that amount into the wallet for redistribution. Now, you get the idea, multiple people start making transactions with each other, the pot fills up a bit, and then, of course, there's the, of course, yes, what can happen as well is that actually someone works for a corporation or for someone else and receives a salary for that on top of his basic income. He doesn't have to, but if he wants to earn more, he can certainly do so. He can propose his services. You get the idea, the rest of the community does the same thing, and our wallet for redistribution fills up. Then come the first of, of the month, and uh, we start redistributing the money. So everybody starts to receive his monthly basic income. Now, I know some of you might think basic income is really nice, but there are certain jobs nobody wants to do. Let's take an example, cleaning the roads. Maybe no one wants to clean the roads. In that case, we might have to foresee some additional incentives for the people who will clean the roads, and therefore we also can budget these things in our wallet for redistribution in our budget. And when the people actually clean the roads, they get incentivized to actually do so, so they get a bit additional income to do so. So the whole thing is about managing the, the budget and being sure about how much we need in the future. Now, if there's an economist, if there is an economist in the room, he might tell me, Jean-Luc, it's nice, but if there is not enough velocity in the, in the economy, your pot will never be filled, and that's true. If there is no one who transacts, the economy slows down, actually what will happen is that there will be less and less money going to the pot, and there might not be enough. And that's why I propose that on top of this rule that, that we can implement in the blockchain, we implement a second rule saying that 
If the amount of money we need in this pot is not obtained, we actually have something like a wealth tax or a post la fortune in French that directly takes the money out of the wallets of the different people in the community. By doing so, we also encourage people to actually spend things and to have the economy pick up again. It's one way of filling the pot. There are many different ways, and that's not the essence today. The essence today is really to understand that you can embed this rule in the blockchain and make this work in a very efficient way. Now, did we just solve everything here? Is this it? We have the robots can come and we still have all our income and live in a decent way? Well, not so fast. Some of you may know that cryptocurrencies or blockchain-based tokens are volatile, they are non-regulated. And that's something we don't want. We don't want our prices to change from one day to the other. So that's not such a good thing. The second thing is blockchain also operates very often on global scale, which means that they can be subject to external pressure, such as market manipulation or political pressure. So that's also something we want to avoid. Having this implemented from one day to the other globally, will require a single currency, and that's something all economists agree on is not a good thing. And it might also lead to too much geopolitical instability because of this new, this new reality. So, while our current financial system is actually too big to fail, this idea is too big to succeed. So what can we do? What we can do is, instead of going global, we can go local, and we can have a multitude of basic income systems living next to each other on multiple local levels at a scale that is large enough to have a thriving economy of goods and services, but also at a scale that is sufficiently small to have a control over it. Now, blockchain-based projects on a local level, they exist. And they exist very close to us. In the Flanders, there's a municipality that actually encourages kids to go to school, that goes to school with a bike. They actually receive a blockchain-based token. And with these tokens, they can go to local retailers and spend these tokens just the way they would spend their fiat currency, their euros. Now, I think that's a really nice idea, but let's be honest, let's bring that to the next level. And instead of just rewarding kids to use their bike to go to school, let's create an economy that prospers on a basic income and that by its very nature makes a circular economy much more a reality that also bonds a community together and finally that is resilient to what happens in the macroeconomy, in the economy outside of the local economy. So what do we need to make that happen? We need four things. First, we need local municipalities. We need a local city that is, has some political courage to say that we want to try this out, maybe complementary to the current system, of course. We also need an identity system to know who's part of the community, who's not part of the community. We need a way to transact peer-to-peer, -peer, and that's where the blockchain comes in. Remember the checks we use. And we need a governance system. We need a governance system to actually define what the tax rate will be and who, who will get something out of the budget. And that's something I didn't touch upon, but there's a thing in the blockchain called smart contracts, which actually allows to define this rule and making sure that these rules are correctly implemented. It also makes it possible for people to actually vote on this rule directly through the blockchain. So governance is very important. Now, while all of these ideas around basic income and local currencies, they exist for many decades now, what is new today is that we have the architectural trust, we have the tools to build these systems. Now, before finishing, I want to share something with you. I want to share the results of the different cities where we implemented a basic income. There are two trends that can be observed. The first trend is people start educating each other much more. The second trend is people start caring for each other much more. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, education and caring for other people are two values I hold very dear. Yet it sometimes seems so difficult in our busy lives to give them the place they deserve. And if a basic income manages to achieve that, and only that, I believe it already makes the world a better place. Thank you. <laughs>